Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's episode. Sorry for being a little bit late, got a little tied up on Friday. We're going to do this real quickly here so that way you guys can see uh, how to create a report only um, compliance policy. So in the last few episodes we've covered um, not just creating a compliance policy and picking some attributes to validate against, uh, we've also covered some basics on conditional access and that sort of thing. So today we're going to take that a step further and talk a little bit about creating a report only compliance policy, which is sort of the first step or the next step in making sure that uh, you can experiment and understand the impacts that you're going to have with conditional access. So for today, we're going to do two things. Um, we're not going to cover the device compliance policy in depth again uh, in Intune. We're going to stick mostly to Azure AD today. We'll walk you through creating a basic policy, and then hopefully you can play around with this um, in your tenant. So um, first things first here, let's go ahead and create a new policy. Uh, you'll see here on the screen I'm in the conditional access blade. I'm logged in as a global administrator. Uh, there's other roles that can create conditional access policies, but uh, for today, I'm just logged in as a global admin. I'm going to go ahead and create new policy or click create new policy. Now, as soon as it pops up, you're going to see a couple different things here. A blade shows up on the left hand side, which shows you uh, all of the options you have available to configure. Um, and then you have this par portion here at the bottom, which asks you what mode you want it to be in. So for today, uh, we're going to do report only mode and report only mode means basically that uh, we're going to allow the policy to quote unquote be evaluated, but not impact the uh, authentication at all, right? So it's always good that you start out with report only mode and then move to uh, enforcement after you understand the impacts of your policy. So for today, uh, I'm just gonna uh, create a policy that impacts Windows 365 uh, devices or the Windows 365 service. Uh, in general, maybe you don't wanna use Windows 365 in your environment or restrict Windows 365 in your environment. It's meant to be like a BYOD uh, sort of scenario. Um, so maybe what we're doing here might not be 100% applicable, but it'll give you sort of an idea of how to go through and configure this policy. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select the users that this should apply to. Now, conditional access is mostly user based, right? Uh, so it's important to select the users that, that are uh, going to be subject to this policy when they go through the authentication flow. Uh, so for me, because I'm using Windows 365, I want to make sure that I select my Windows 365 licensed users. So I have the single group in my tenant. And what this group does is it controls uh, provisioning of Windows 365, licensing of Windows 365 for users, and uh, now I'll be applying this conditional access policy to it as well. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and select them. And an important step here is you might think, okay, I know who I need to include, let's just go ahead and move forward. Let's take a beat here and, uh, and backpedal. Uh, it's always important to exclude or have a, some break glass sort of scenarios, especially when you get to um, the on mode. So for me, one thing I never want to do when I'm testing uh, conditional access is I uh, never want to lock out my global admins, right? So for me, when I create policies like this, uh, I go ahead and I exclude uh, my global administrator. Let me just type this in here. Anybody with the global admin role in my environment. Now, in, in my environment, I have a separate set of conditional access policies that only apply to global admins. Um, so I make sure that those accounts are secure. And then on all my regular accounts or all my regular transactions, I go ahead and exclude global admins. So that way, anything that I do doesn't impact my ability to administer my tenant. Super important. So the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down to cloud action, cloud apps or actions. And remember, this is for Windows 365 or the Windows 365 portal. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select apps. I'm going to go ahead and hit select. And in this node here, I'm going to punch in Windows 365. Um, so what you'll see here is you'll see the Azure AD app ID from Windows 365. I'll go ahead and select that. And what this means is every time a device or every time a user authenticates the Windows 365 portal, this will apply to that user. Next thing I'm going to do is look at conditions, right? So for the sake of this demo, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, there's, there's multiple conditions here, right? You can think about this being logic when a conditional access policy applies. I'm going to configure this to apply to any device platform, right? Go ahead and click done. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is come down here to my grant controls. Now we covered this sort of in the first episode, uh, you know, the different grant controls you have. And for me, what I want to measure is I want to measure the impact that uh, me requiring a compliant device would have on users accessing the Windows 365 portal, right? So for me, I'm going to select require device to be marked as compliant. You'll see another message here that says, remember, don't lock yourself out. So go ahead and select that. And then you'll see a nice little warning that pops up here at the bottom that says, hey, policies in a report only mode 
requiring compliant devices may prompt users. So you may get some auth prompts on Mac OS, Android, and Linux to select a device certificate, right? Uh, that's no bueno, right? I don't want to affect my end user. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the recommendation here uh, and exclude those devices. I'll go ahead and click on create. Now, after I create this, I had created this policy in advance. So let me go ahead and uh, switch over here to my activity details. I'd already created this policy, so let's look at what that looks like on uh, on an end user's uh, authentication. So you see here, I have my user account. Um, my user account was uh, signing in to um, Windows 365. So you'll see that I have, uh, hey, here's the Windows 365 portal, it's signing in. You'll look here, uh, if I come over to conditional access, you'll notice that my report only policy isn't shown here. Um, so I'll come over here to the report only blade. You'll see I have two policies that are report only. I have my Windows 365 and my uh, a WIP, a Windows Information Protection Test Policy. So I look here and I look at my result. My result was failure. So when I tried to log in, uh, this would have failed if, uh, if I would have enforced this policy. And then if I come in here, I can click on the policy details and I can see what actually failed. So, uh, so you can see that I matched the user account. You can see that I matched the Windows 365 app. So both of those things matched. You can see that I matched a device platform that was applicable, right? Uh, there's some other information here that I blurred out, so uh, so my location isn't exposed, but you can see the location if you'd use that for uh, sign-in uh, sort of conditions. And then you'll notice down here the grant control. Uh, my grant control that wasn't satisfied was requiring a compliant device. So there you go. Now you know how to create a compliance policy and a basic report only, and you can get on your way to making sure that the device compliance that you define in Intune can affect your sign-ins. That's all for me this week. Uh, we'll see you later in the week when I do another episode. Uh, talk to you all later. Have a good week. Bye-bye.